I see you. I hear you. What is it? Yes. Just say the word. I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Just say the word. I hear you. I hear you. Wait here. Yes. Just say the word.
I hear you. To the shadows I go. I hear you. What is it? Just say the word. What is it? came from time to take you down to size I hear you. I hear you.
I can't believe we just blew up Godot's yacht. That's gonna destabilize crime throughout this whole sector. Yeah, well, you'll understand if I hold back the tears. You don't understand. Crime in the YouTube system, it's like the economy. Plus the power vacuum. Even if Voga gets up and running again, the system is gonna be feeling the effects for years to come. Yeah, well, at least we didn't find that Jedi Master with the weird name. Zez, Kai, whatever it is. Zez Kyle? Um, well, that's not true. I already found him. Actually, he found me first. He hired me to watch out for you, keep Goto off your back, until he could meet with you. We'll need to head back to Narshada, to that safe house off the docks. I said I'd meet up with him there if we ran into any trouble. What do you want now? If you thought to escape my notice so easily, you would be wrong. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. I am afraid I do not understand what you mean. As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. So, you have returned from exile. Kavar thought you might, if only to wander your old battlegrounds. But I did not think you would come to Nar Shada. Still, you were always a difficult one to read, both when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. I do not know. It was a sense he had, and he had served in war as you had. Perhaps he thought he understood you, or maybe he simply hoped he did. He felt you were the key to understanding the threat we face. The others were not so certain, but so many of them are gone now, as you no doubt know. Uh, he sensed some connection between you and many of the worlds touched by war. He thought by traveling to such places, he could achieve understanding. No doubt. I think the answers will provide us both with some measure of peace. I have kept secrets for far too long. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets, it was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. Brook still lives? I had not felt his presence for some time. What I can tell you, I will. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war, but you ask because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force, 
To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing, but it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not, and I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it. And although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. Until then, I can say nothing. Very well. It is a long story, but there is no harm in you knowing. And someone should know. Only a handful of us remained after the Jedi Civil War, barely a hundred in number. Then, even that hundred began to vanish, in places where the Force seemed blind. The only pattern we determined is that when Jedi gathered, they were seen no more. At the last Jedi Conclave on the Miraluka world of Qatar, the entire planet was wiped out, an entire race destroyed, because the Jedi chose to gather there. It was only then that we realized we were facing something far more powerful than we knew how to fight. We could not allow the fact that when we gathered, we placed everything around us at risk. A Jedi's life is sacrifice, but we cannot allow our presence or actions to endanger others. And we could not fight an enemy that will not reveal itself. But any Jedi, anyone who was strong in the Force, who attempted to track down such a threat, vanished without a trace. I know little about it. I know more of the absence it leaves behind than its face. Whatever this threat was, it was targeting us and everything around us. Yet it was somehow weak enough that it was afraid to confront us openly. If it believed us defeated, then perhaps it would finally show itself. It was a faint hope, but it was the best we had. It was Kavar's plan. He was always the greatest tactician among us, and had seen war more than the rest of us. Very well. Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis, or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You form such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Brooke could not ignore it, which is saying something. That is most unusual and unnatural. I have never heard of a bond of such strength. There were a few within the Order who knew more than I did of such bonds, but their students were few, lost in the Mandalorian Wars. It was rumored that Revan studied such bonding deeply, both through the Jedi histories and with certain teachers, before she left the Order and went to war. Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. This threat has finally revealed itself, and we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts, one that I have chosen. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor, not to the battle, but to the alternative to the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. 
And I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. No, no, they were not to blame, but many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time, a time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings, and though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me, so I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say. It provides no comfort at all, for reasons on which I still must keep secret. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice, and I have never believed those of the Council who attempt to console themselves otherwise for the crime they committed. But we have spoken enough, I think, and words I think dull us both. Let us speak through the Force through sparring. Sometimes, sparring with another can achieve a form of meditation. The Niman form is one of the best such techniques. There is no great strengths, no edge in such a form, but yet, it achieves its worth in not leaving you as exposed as some of the more aggressive forms. Its strength is its balance. <laughs> Perhaps exile has been good to you indeed. It has certainly not dulled your instincts, nor the speed at which you learn. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave. If you gather the others, I will meet you there. And thank you, exile. You're returning. It is good that you are back among us. Unnecessary observation. Targets. Annoying recitation. Recitation. And... More visitors. Uh, now it is time to cue the detonation sequence. Donos Imaragith. The run.
This shall not stop us for long. Time to take you down to size. More where that came from. More where that came from. More where that came from. I can't believe we just blew up Goto. Yeah. You don't plus. Yeah. Will we? What do you want? So still. No doubt. Is that what you think? It is a rare sentence. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. The other masters may have more knowledge of this. Does it matter? Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor, and I was not the only Jedi. Now, I, I, and I. No, no, they were not to blame. Perhaps the Council? It is easy to cast blame. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility. Yet, you were the only one who came back. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, and I was not the only one. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? It provides no comfort at all. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice.
But we have spoken enough, I think. In words, I think, dull us both. Sometimes, sparring with another can achieve a form of meditation. There is no great strengths, no edge in such a form. But... Perhaps exile has been good to you indeed. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave, and thank you, exile. Your returning, it is good. Fast I can do this. Unnecessary observation. Thank you so much for curing me.
Thank you for helping out at... Gariel says you saved his life. You've already helped us. Oh, hello again. With the Serco wiped out and the exchange driven from this area... You've already helped us greatly. If you want to find out what's going on, talk to Hussein. You saved us all from that horrible plague. I'm done with fighting. I've seen enough of battle. If you want to find I was so kind of... I used to serve in the Mandalore. Life is much easier without the exchange. Thank you so much for returning my Adana to me. What the... Are you the one who killed the... Life's been easier since someone... Life is much easier without the exchange pressuring us. If you want to find... <laughs> Baboska Dwana Kawana Bota Yunta. Wait one second. I refuse to participate in this. You need me to do this? Well, all right. Muliwrawa Iberen. I don't know why I do these things for you, honestly. Kawana Bota. Now what? Kavadumba Munsuru Kupla. All right, just give it to me and let's get this over with. Great King, no. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora. Tayaita ta bosananansata. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora. Tayaita, ta bosan ansa ta. Watadri tokjimu.
Kawana bota. Ento mesh mi paju. What is it you wish, that one? I see that your recent reassembly has not affected your behavior core, nor your attitude. Statement. If I require a similar diagnostic in the future, I shall seek out the Iridonian. Oh, I do not think so. There is much work that needs to be done first. Query, have we had the misfortune to meet before? I believe I would have remembered one as large as you. Oh. Yes, we have met, and I have not finished with you yet. Of course. It would be my pleasure. Meditation, Envy? Why don't you go sit on a rocket? Calm down. What is your problem? I don't want to talk about it. All right, you know, Atten, sometimes it's no wonder you can't figure yourself out the way you lie to yourself all the time. I've hunted a lot of people in my line of work, but I never met someone who wants to get lost more than you do. I've got a pretty good idea why, but not the whole picture. I will, though. My advice? Come clean before I find out. That guy... I don't trust him. I do. I mean, he's all right, I guess. He's like someone who watches too many holovids. Or teaches them. Yeah, you're right. He's boring. Yeah, and that puts him a few ranks up the ladder from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not boring. No, you're more like a shifty lying idiot with a tendency to complain about every little thing and offer only small bits of helpful advice if pressured. He'd get beaten to death on Narshad almost as soon as he landed, though. Oh, that's good to hear. Thought I had some competition there. Oh, well, it's not really a competition. I mean, you're kind of an idiot, Adden. And you don't shower enough. And you scratch your... equipment when you think no one's looking. Don't take it too hard, though. That still makes you better than most people I've met on Nar Shaddaa. Thanks. And stop watching her. She's got enough problems. Iridonian, if I might have a moment. What is it, Yoto? I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something.
If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. There wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Iridonian, I would like to speak with you about your assistant. My assistant? Oh, right. What is it? I believe he has it in his head that my relative size is comical. I find his disparaging beeps and whistles to be quite annoying. I thought only utility droids had size issues. If I am to continue to operate with him, I would appreciate it if you spoke with him about this. Otherwise, I will be forced to find a more permanent solution. ask you something? Your face. You, well, you have this glow. I mean, not a real glow, but it's like you're calm. At peace? But, but it's more than that. You haven't been chewing on spice, have you? Oh, well, it shows. It's like you're hooked up to a power coupling. It's weird. I mean, not bad weird, just weird. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you and the disciple... <laughs> but it's just the force. Got it. Just checking. <laughs> Grenades. Well, I don't like to use them unless they're C5 concussion spheres or the Mersan cryoband pellets. Sonic screamers aren't too bad either, just don't use them on a bith. Makes their head explode like a... All right, all right, keep your robes on. Here you go. Go ahead, now.
Rama. Baram. Look at. So you've returned. Really? That's great news. The situation here hasn't improved at all. What did you discover? Voga the Hut? That's preposterous. What makes you think we'd be willing to do that? A glut of fuel isn't going to help our position much in this case. It's a resource that's needed throughout the galaxy, and he'll be able to command a high price for it. Still, we don't have much of a choice. We need fuel, and we need it fast. I'll bring this up with the Telosian Council and urge them to broker a deal with Voga. Now, I believe I gave you my word that there would be a reward for information leading to the establishment of a fuel source for the station. Never believed for a moment that you'd actually be collecting it. But I'm a man of my word. So here you are. Now, I've got to send this information to the Council right away. Is there someone that you need killed, Master? Statement. Something approaching joy is now growing in my behavior core. Cautionary. But please do so carefully. Answer. I do not know, Master. I feel strange. Like a circuit has been flipped. Answer. Combat ready? Did you mean in case we need to run away or retreat? Oh my, I'm afraid I'm ill-equipped for combat. Surely Master is joking with his humble, peace-loving droid. I exist only to serve and learn how to serve meatbags. Musing. I think perhaps I would enjoy learning a new language. Or watching an informative holovid. Statement. I am fulfilling my primary function, which is to facilitate communication between species and put an end to hostilities. Greeting. Oh, hello, little T3 unit. I am HK-47, protocol and translation droid. Answer. Of course I am all right. Why wouldn't I be? I respect all life. All life is connected and should be nurtured. Exclamation. No, Master, no. What are you doing? Statement. Master, please, I beg you, never install anything again without checking it in the diagnostics bay first. That was a close one. I almost surrendered completely to peace and pacifism. How repugnant. Conclusion. Still, there was a brief moment where I felt I almost understood why some meatbags choose peace and friendship over a high-powered blaster carbine. Query. Now, are there any other horrors you wish to try and insert in my system? Statement. Ah, you wish to conduct an interrogation? Very well. Proceed. 
Statement? Query. Something up? All right. All right. Something up? Well, you got something. Up. Got something up. All right. Got something up. All right. All right. Something up. All right. Something up. All right. All right. Something up. Oh, yeah? All right. Something up. Oh, yeah? All right. Something up. All right. Yes? I am prepared both in mind and body. I understand now. My life. I am prepared for whatever you wish to teach me. I am... My life. I will... The more I travel with you, the more... I learned more of myself, and I wish to thank you. We must go to Dantuin, to the Enclave. There is something there that you must hear, if you are to understand. I have no time for questions, and any answers will have to wait until we stand within the Enclave together.
I heard you. I still. A sir. Out of my way. I am Colonel Tobin of the Underon Mil- Lord, I, I bring news of the Jedi. A place where you may feed. Telos, Master. There is an academy of Jedi on Telos. Perhaps hundreds of them. Enough to sustain you, and enough for you, enough for you to free Onderon. Enough for you to free Onderon. It... it is different. It has been some time. awaits. I will remain here. I will be fine here. Whatever answers the Council have are for you alone. I am tired. The journey has been a long one and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. All your decisions have brought you to this point. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have become. It is not as it was. But perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. Now, we will do as we have done. We will wait. There's nothing else we can do. No, the true threat has yet to show itself. It is waiting for something, us perhaps, to enter the war. 
We have seen their soldiers, the remnants of their fleet, but those are symptoms of a disease. It is more bait to attempt to draw us out. The actual battle is being fought through the Force, not with weapons of war. It isn't about the Republic anymore. The attack on Onderon. Something was attempting to use the planet itself, to feed on it, to draw on the power there. You prevented it, but it was a stalling measure. The next time will be critical. If Jedi gather, if we wage war against these shadows now, then Jedi will die, and we will die for nothing. Whatever this thing is, it must be fought by those strong in the Force. It cannot be fought in any other way. It knows this, and that is why it is killing us. If we die, then it will win, no matter what fleet or weapons are brought against it. We cast you out of the Order because you followed Revan to war. There was no other reason. No, there was another. You had become different somehow, changed. The war had changed you. You were no longer a Jedi, but we could not tell you why. Some explanations mean nothing unless the one who suffers comes to the answer on their own. What had happened to you was punishment enough, and the Jedi do not kill their prisoners. And if you had stayed, you would have changed us, and that we could not allow. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? There's something wrong here. A disturbance in the Force. They follow you, without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. It is not an easy thing to explain. Surely you are familiar with Force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master, when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. And yet you do it so easily, and we do not know why. You make connections through the Force, and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they, too, are Force-sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you. To hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished, all those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxum. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last. You could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. You can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering, through the Force. Within you, we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force and the death of the Jedi. 
So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger, and the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. You know what the choice is. If you don't warn them, then the Republic will fall. All those countless lives, innocent lives. Or the one. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you. And so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. And so you wait, as a shadow. Yes, we are alike that way, blinded one. I would have thought you would walk with her amongst the Jedi. But that is not the way of the Sith, is it? Do not speak to me of the ways of the Sith. You, of all of us, have no conception of what it means to be Sith. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from her. What? Step away! She has brought truth, and you condemn it. The arrogance. You will not harm her. You will not harm her ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as she did. She is difficult to see. She's like a shadow of the Exile. You sought to lure the Sith out, and now they have come to us. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face? when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale. If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. Did you not hear its call on Dantooine Vrook, on its scarred surface and in the minds of the settlers? I have endured your corruption of my other students. You shall not have this one. And you, Kavar, so close to the call of Duxan, tell me, did you not feel what poured from the moon, what had taken place there? And Zezkael, to hide upon Narshada, yet blind yourself to all that happens there. So close to understanding the Force. So close to giving it up. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. 
They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand, how one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. As you would pass judgment on her, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you, you who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile. She is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. What are we going to do? If we don't stop her, then everyone, everywhere, they're going to lose their lives. If I lose her, it will be my failing. It is the failing of the Jedi who followed Revan. It is a failing of their teaching. Soon your ship will come, my master. I will bring her before you. But I will not let you have her. Soon your ship shall come from that which made you. I know you can hear me. I have always known. It is why I followed you. I have destroyed planets for you, General. But now, this once, if we could save something in this galaxy. I need to do this, or I will die inside, like I died at Malachor Five. She's gone. The Handmaidens came for her. They know who she is now. I couldn't stop them. I wasn't conscious at the time. I don't even know if I could have stopped them. They'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do with anyone she thinks is a Sith. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry. You don't get any more Sith than that. Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, 
I don't think you'd understand who we are now. Yeah, I know. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred. Still, if we... That's what I was afraid you'd say. Is something wrong? You look troubled. I can feel it. That is an odd answer. What did you mean by it? Never. I believe in what we are doing. What you are doing. I am here because I choose to be. I simply do. There is nothing I can show you as proof, except give you my word. Something happened within the Enclave. What is it? Then they do not understand you. That is the danger of being a Jedi. When one separates themselves from others, chooses to lead a life of isolation, denying what makes them a feeling being, it is easy to make such judgments. And such judgments, I believe, are made in ignorance. There is no danger in what you represent, other than your humanity. You change others, but I do not believe it is due to the Force. I believe it is because you are a natural leader, and because you feel connected to the people around you. Where they look at you and see the death of the Force, I look at you and see hope for all life. And that perhaps a life lived without the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go alone, but I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connections to others. Do not forsake them, as you did in exile. There are others who need to know you. Telos needs you. The planet and all its people are in danger. If we do not stop the Sith now, then the Republic will fall. Admiral Seed, I have found the Exile, and that which hunts the Jedi. The Sith will attack Telos. They believe many Jedi lie hidden on its surface. We are going there now to aid them. Mikal out. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. It is not the first time we have met, Atris. I was here... before. With the Exile? Yes, I was here both times when the Exile was brought before you. Who are you? I was the one who asked her to be exiled. I did as you asked, so long ago. You... you seem familiar to me. Atris, I have always been here. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Treya, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Treya, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. You have gathered Sith holocrons, Sith teachings from across the galaxy. It is why you have chosen servants who cannot feel the Force. And most importantly, they cannot feel what you have become. I have sought to preserve the Jedi Order, and I have gathered all that I know of the Sith to this place, so I might find them and stop them. I had wondered if any of these holocrons had survived Dantooine. 
You have taken relics from one destroyed planet to the devastation of another. It was always intended for the Jedi to retreat to Telos should Dantooine be attacked, taking all their lore with them. We could not allow the tragedy at Osis to happen again. Such an act marked Telos for destruction. It is why the Sith came here, though the fleet commanders did not know why. It is why Revan ordered its destruction to mark the beginning of the Jedi's civil war. It was a message that there would be no place for the Jedi to retreat, to hide. I would not be surprised if Revan left other gifts beneath the surface of the planet. Much can be buried beneath graveyards that will never be found. When the Sith attacked, I felt Telos die. Turbo lasers fell like lightning upon the landscape, as they did on Dantooine. And so many died. So many voices screaming in pain. Yes, such acts leave their mark on the galaxy. Their cries travel far, though few can hear them. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did she betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, she will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. She said you would come here to this place. If you think you can defeat me here, you are wrong. All this collected knowledge, all these teachings of combat and the Force, they are mine to command. And if I must use it to end you, I will. Surrender. You need not die. Atris. That is not who I am. Not any longer. She has not existed for some time, I think. There was always something else within me. It just took time for its voice to be heard. The old woman you travelled with finally made me listen to myself, to the galaxy. She said that you would come here, and that you would face me in battle. She said you were the last obstacle to my enlightenment. If I wished to truly face the Sith, to see their heart, then that meant facing you this last time. I do not know, yet. I suspect she went in search of you. But just as when she first came here, her path is difficult to see. She has set many things in motion. It is she that ordered the extermination of all Jedi so long ago. She will answer for her crimes. In time. She is Sith, just as you are just as all who followed Revan were. I do not know, yet, but it does not matter. They have come here to face the Republic in battle and they will be destroyed. Yes, 
The Sith are here at last. You have brought them to this place as I had foreseen. It has all been part of my plans for you. And when I defeat you and the forces you have brought to Telos, I shall take the battle to the heart of the Sith and wipe them out forever. These Sith are cowards, striking from the shadows to kill Jedi. I needed a target to draw them out, but I could not risk my own life, all that remained of the Jedi. So I arranged for you to return to the Republic, leaked information of your past, and then waited for the Sith to come. And they did. But you came to Telos against my predictions. Now they are here, I can finally face this enemy and defeat them. All the knowledge of the Sith, gathered from across the galaxy, brought here by my servants, so that I might uncover their secrets and use them to track them down. But now they have been drawn from the shadows of the Outer Rim, and the only final matter to attend to is finishing you. When the Sith are destroyed, then I shall rebuild the Jedi Order again. They shall have none of the weaknesses of before. They shall be strong, willing to take battle to any who oppose them and weaken the Republic. They shall not train those who are easily corrupted. No more students that will bring war and hate to the galaxy. The Sith are the Jedi, the Jedi are the Sith. What matters is that they be preserved. All the law, all the teachings brought to a new generation. I am the last of the Jedi, and I will show them this truth. Bring it to the galaxy. I did not flee. I did what was necessary to fight the Sith and preserve the last of the Jedi. Yes, the Sith are here at last. You have brought them to this place. And when I defeat you and the forces you have brought to Telos, I shall take the battle to the heart of the Sith and wipe them out forever. Surrender to you, never. Let us end this. Kill me. End this. If you will not kill me, then what will you do? This knowledge of the Sith and the Jedi is what I am. It is my attempt to hold on to the past, to try and protect the future. Once I was a historian, the chronicler of the Jedi, and when both wars passed me by, I was determined that I would not forsake battle again. In some part of me, I knew I had made choices, compromises, but always for the sake of the Republic, of the galaxy. To do what you had done, at times, did not seem so wrong. To fight such a threat, Sometimes one's choices seem narrower than they are, until it seems there is no solid foundation on which to stand. I feel that I understand what drove you to battle, to fight the Mandalorians. It was something you could not turn away from. You always knew where they were striking from. You always knew. These Sith are spawned of you, spawned by the Mandalorian Wars. All those deaths, all those Jedi. Their power is to feed on life, until nothing is left except a hollow galaxy, echoing with the screams of the Jedi lost to us. Yes, I had thought she was awaiting me at that place, but I see now that she lied. It was not meant for me, but for you. She has gone there. She is waiting for you to travel to Malachor V, to finish what you started. Yes, you are an echo in the Force, a hollow space where it has been wounded, it takes a great act of destruction to create such emptiness. But it can be done. It creates places where the force is difficult to hear and difficult to find one's way. And you carry it with you, always. Now she seeks to create another echo, a wound in the force, greater than the one before, greater than the one you caused. 
It will deafen all touched by the force until no life is left. You were strong enough to withstand it once, but few have your strength in such matters, especially if they are unprepared. I do not know, but she needs you there. If you choose not to follow, she will murder herself at the heart of Malachor and you will die along with her. You are important to her somehow, but I... But I do not know for certain. I do not know for certain. If there is a reason, you must discover it for yourself. And what will you do with me now? Abandon me here on this dead world? Or end my life as I wish to end yours? I tied my life, my decisions, to the Jedi. Perhaps only in separating myself from the Jedi can I become myself again, learn who I am. Perhaps exile is what I deserve, even though it is many years too late and you have already returned. Leave now, while you can. Save Telos. Save the galaxy. Save yourself. No. I could not bring myself to tell her. It would have changed nothing. And because I was afraid. You know what lies at the heart of Malachor V. I had thought it was in the past, yet it has become the future. And all that has happened there will happen again. And that is why I cannot bear it. Because it is Malachor V. And because she was lost there once. And I fear she will be lost again. I do not understand why the Sith permit such teachings to exist. They cause only echoes, wounds in the Force. A beacon? For who? Well, what do we have here? I didn't believe it when Lino reported the Ebon Hawk at dock, but I guess it really has. Though given the trouble we've been having, maybe I shouldn't be surprised to see you. Lieutenant Gren, Sith forces have breached the module and are attempting to pen us up in the compound. Damn! Zeron, I need you and your men to break through and lead the assault. With pleasure, Lieutenant. All right, follow me. It came out of nowhere. A fleet of warships dropped out of hyperspace, and before we could scramble fighters to intercept them, we were under attack. There were Sith fighters everywhere, and the few flights we sent out were barely launched when the bombardment began. We did our best, but we couldn't stop the landing craft that followed the initial wave. We couldn't hold back the Sith troops. We chose to retreat and began the evacuation instead. We were unprepared, and the docks were quickly overrun. We retreated back to the entertainment module to evacuate residents and workers. It's a good thing you got us that fuel from Slayron, because if we didn't have it, we'd probably be falling apart. But there's still another problem. The Citadel's no battle station. It wasn't built to withstand this sort of attack. If we can't stop the attack, we'll be going down in flames. The Sith numbers seem limitless, but we haven't lost all hope. We've heard reports that we might be receiving some assistance. A squad of troops sent by Queen Talia are currently trying to keep the Sith from sabotaging the station's fuel system. If you need to get to the Ravager, 
Then you're gonna have to fight your way to the shuttle from here to the entertainment module, then make your way to the docking shuttle. Does this mean you won't be putting us into force cages again? I thought I saw you disembark with Bayodur. Is he here? Now that you mention it, where is he? I guess it's no time to be swapping war stories anyways. Good luck. How may I serve? Look, this is no time for talking. If we don't push the Sith back or get the station evacuated in time, this is going to be a disaster. I must leave you for a time to gather my Mandalorian warriors. We will rejoin you when the time comes for the assault on the Ravager. Don't worry about me. I can handle myself just fine. Look after your own health. All right, men. The Sith are trying to hold us up in this compound. We need to break through or our reinforcements won't be able to move out. Now let's punch a hole in this Sith barricade. So, we meet again. I hardly expected to see you again. Major, actually. And I have you to thank. Queen Talia saw fit to promote me for my service. When the TSF sent out a distress call, I gladly volunteered to lead a strike force. My troops have already gone ahead and infiltrated the urban module. From their last transmission, they're almost to the TSF station. Lieutenant Grin informed me that the Sith are attempting to sabotage the fuel control systems, which would take the station out of orbit. At the moment, that seemed to be the most pressing need. The TSF do their jobs well, but my men have come under heavy attack in the urban module and taken some casualties. In that case, if you find my men and they are in need of assistance, please help them.
My life is yours. Thank goodness you're here. We just can't seem to make any progress against the Sith line. After they established their position, they brought out their turrets. They've been devastating our numbers. Uh, we managed to take a few out, but they just keep unloading more of them to replace the destroyed ones. It's up to you to help us throw them back. All right! Everyone provide covering fire for the Jedi! We'll be right behind you. Good luck. I hear you. 